At Manchester University in England, they've discovered that just thinking about exercising could help to keep us fit. Right, Andy, if you want to prefer... Sports psychologist Dave Smith talks an athlete through an imaginary run right, while right, monitoring his heartbeat. You're 200 metres, so it's very, very important that you give an absolute maximum effort here. I want you to run as fast as you possibly can. On your mark. Get set. Go. For an athlete conditioned to respond to starting orders, the words alone are sufficient to start adrenaline flowing and to persuade the body that an effort will soon be required. Instantly, the heart rate climbs. But after about 15 seconds, the brain realizes that the race is not real and turns off most of the machinery. But enough excitement still seeps through from the brain to the body to raise the athlete's heart rate by a total of about 20 beats per minute even though he has never moved a muscle. Mental preparation is obviously a vital part of physical fitness, but Dave Smith goes even further. He believes that muscle tone can be improved by thought alone, and to prove this, he set up an experiment involving the human body's least used muscle, the one that moves our little finger. One group of subjects, exercising twice a week, tries to strengthen that muscle alone by pressing the little finger repeatedly against the side of a metal tube. The other group are encouraged, while using the same apparatus, to do nothing but think about performing the same finger exercise. Imagining performing the strength training does promote significant strength gains. The results aren't actually as good as actually performing the task, but they are significant. Specifically, in our last study, we found that individuals who actually did the strength training improved their strength by about 30%, and individuals who imagined performing it improved by about 16%. So, could this mean the end of exercise? Could we become fit just by thinking about it? The results clearly aren't as good as actually going out and performing exercise. However, what they do mean is that, for example, when people are unable to exercise due to illness or injury, they may obtain some of the benefits from imagining performing the exercise. If the mind can give the body a virtual workout that is nevertheless half as good as the real thing, what else is possible?